Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. Today we want to answer the question, why? <laughs> why did the Israelites have to go through the wilderness wanderings? Because as we reflect on what we've read so far, we might wonder, why didn't God take them a shorter route? Uh, surely there was a shorter route to take than the route that they took through the wilderness. And surely God could have made the, the journey easier for them. Um, there was a lot of times they didn't have anything to eat. There was times when they didn't have anything to drink. They had to live in these makeshift houses for 40 years. Uh, they had to walk across <clears throat> excuse me, difficult terrain. Now they had a very, very difficult time. And so surely God could have taken them the shorter route and the easier route. But he didn't. And we might ask ourselves why. And likewise, as we look at our own lives, as we go through wild, through the wilderness, uh, wild, the wilderness symbolizing trials in our lives, as we look back on the trials of our lives, we might ask the same question, why do we have to go through these things? Why can't God give us, one, a shorter route, shorter route through these trials? Why do they endure so long? And then also, why can't God just make it easier for us? Surely He has the power to make to change our circumstances, to change the situation that we are in, to make life a whole lot more pleasant. But He doesn't. And a lot of times what we find is that He does the opposite. Uh, whereas we think, well, this is the shorter route, this is the better route, this is the easier route, God says, well, it's not the route that I've chosen for you. And so, in order for us to enter into the blessing, we have to go the long way around. We have to go the very difficult way uh, to get there. So why is that? Why is it that God did that in, for the Israelites, and why does He do that for us today? Well, Deuteronomy chapter 8 might help us, or does help us, in answering that question. And the shortest answer to that is found in verse 16. It says, In the wilderness he fed you manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good for you in the end. That last phrase, to do good for you in the end. He brought them through all those trials to bring them, to bring good to, uh, for them in the end. And it could be say, talking about the uh, promised land. There's definitely good things in the promised land waiting for them. But also we could look at uh, the good things that they picked up while they were in the wilderness. Good things that God did for them uh, while there. And some of these things are mentioned in, in the earlier part of this chapter. And these are things that uh, perhaps God is trying to do in our lives as we enter into wilderness situations. For one, He brought them through the wilderness to humble them. In verse 2 it says, You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, that He might humble you. you now there's nothing that humbles us more than going through the wilderness, going through trials. Before we go into trials, you know, when life is good, when uh, we have money in the bank, when we have good health, well, we begin to become self-sufficient. And we become, uh, we begin to push God aside. And, and to perhaps have a certain level of pride within us. I uh, think that we are good enough, we're smart enough, we're strong enough, we're in control enough to handle the situation. But when we enter into those dark places in life, when there is nothing but chaos all around us, when we really don't know where to turn, what to do, what to say, when we are at a complete loss, that's when we have to basically fall on our knees and say, Lord, I don't have control anymore. I cannot fix this situation. I need you. And it's very humbling to go through these wilderness situations. And so he might cause us to go through those things to humble us, as he did uh, the Israelites. But also he can bring us through wilderness experiences to reveal what's in our heart. Uh, also in verse 2 he says, he led you uh, in the wilderness these 40 years that he might humble you testing you to know what was in your heart. Nothing tests what's in our heart better than trials. You go through a difficulty, uh, 
immediately what is in your heart will come out, or eventually what in your heart will come out. If you're just serving the Lord because uh, for the wrong reasons, because you know your family uh, is Christians, or you think that uh, you can get something out of it, uh, maybe a, in a selfish way, uh, maybe because you want to feel better about the af afterlife or whatever, and, and it's a very selfish reason why you're a Christian, when those trials come, that will be brought out. That will be brought out to the surface. But the other thing is true as well. If you really are devoted to the Lord and you are serving Him, not superficially, not just on the surface, but you have this deep love for the Lord and He is your heart's desire, when that trial comes, uh, that's what's going to come out. If you have a heart that's deeply rooted in faith, when you become broken, Faith is what's going to come out. I think about uh, the woman with the alabaster jar that came to Jesus and she broke it and anointed him with it. And that sweet smelling perfume came out. Well, how is it that that, that good substance was able to come out, be revealed and to offer up that beautiful fragrance? Well, the jar was broken and, this, and that revealed what was within. And if we have a good heart, when we are broken, when God brings us through the wilderness and we become broken, what will come out is that sweet fragrance of faith. And it will be very sweet to others and it will be sweet also to the Lord. Uh, but in either case, when we are broken, it brings out what's within. But he also did it to see whether they would keep his commandments or not. Is your obedience to the Lord because you are devoted to him, because you love him? Or for some other reason. Trials and difficulties will really bring it out. And and it's uh, easy to serve the Lord when all is well. And when everybody else around you is serving the Lord. But when society starts pressing you. When your friends and others begin to uh, oppress you. And persecute you for what you believe. That's when you're really tested. To see why is it that you really are serving God in the first place. But then also, we go through difficulties sometimes because God is disciplining us. In verse 5 it says, Thus you are to know in your heart that the Lord your God was disciplining you just as a man disciplines his son. And, and this was very effective for them. Uh, even though God had to discipline them over and over and over again, at least with this second generation, uh, it seems to have worked, worked some. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that they were perfect, but uh, as you read the story, as you go into the book of Joshua, uh, they do seem very uh, sensitive to the Lord, very obedient to the Lord, at least more so than the previous generation. And so God sometimes has to discipline us, and that's why we have to go through uh, the wilderness. One thing that, that a lot of times is not even considered when, when something bad happens to us is sin. Typically we think, well, if something bad happens to us, uh, it's just bad luck, you know, we, it was unfortunate what, what we have to go through, or we might even blame God. But we need to be um, introspective enough to say, well, is this something in my life? Is there sin in my life that's causing these difficulties and these trials? And is it that God is disciplining me to try to get those out of me? Uh, so discipline can be a reason. And then also he might be sent us through, the, through these hard times because what is, uh, the good times aren't always what is best for us. Uh, we always want the easy route. We always want the fastest route. But that's not always what's best. As he would go on, and uh, especially in verse 10, he talks about when you are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. Kind of ties into what we talked about yesterday. When you enter into the good times and everything is good, sometimes it's very easy to forget God. And so uh, he might have to bring us through the wilderness to keep us grounded and rooted in him. So with those things um, understood, as we go into a wilderness situation, there are also some other things that we need to remember. Some things that might bring us comfort while we're experiencing these things. And one of them is that God will feed us and God will sustain us through the wilderness wanderings just as he did or just as he did for the Israelites. Uh, in 
verse 3, he says, He humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna which you did not know. And then in verse 4, he says, Your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. So for 40 years, their clothes never wore out. Uh, that's amazing. And then also their feet didn't swell as much walking as they did. Their feet never swell, never did swell on them. And I don't know that they even noticed that while they were experiencing it. Um, I don't know if anyone ever looked down and said, Hey, you know what? My clothes aren't wearing out. My, I mean, my feet aren't swelling. But afterwards, they could look back and say, yeah, you know what? The Lord did sustain us through those 40 years. Our clothes didn't wear out. Our feet didn't swell. And the same thing is true when we go through trials and difficulties in life. We may not recognize it at the time, but God is sustaining us through whatever it is that we're going through. Um, it, that doesn't mean that it's easy. It doesn't mean that we're just soaring across the problems as though they don't exist. Uh, they can still be very, very difficult, but at the same time, God has given us just enough strength to make it through another day, to make it through another moment, make it through another breath. Sometimes God just supplies us with that little bit, and we don't even recognize it while it's happening until we look back and we say, wow, how in the world did I ever get through that? Well, the answer is the Lord was sustaining you. The Lord uh, sustained you just like he sustained uh, the Israelites in the wilderness. And then also, uh, we need to remember when we're going through these wilderness experiences that God blesses those who endure. If we hold on to our faith, if we cling tight to Him and keep our faith and our confidence in Him, a blessing awaits us. Uh, the same was true with them. As you continue to read, um, actually verses 7 through 9, it gives a description of the land that they were going to. And it was a very pleasant land, a very good land, a land that would sustain them and give them great abundance. It was going to be a wonderful blessing. But they had to endure this wilderness experience to get there. And God has a blessing waiting for us. We don't know what that blessing is sometimes. But we know that God is working something out good for us. And that we have to endure. We need to hold fast to our faith. Uh, keep our faith that He is wise. He knows what He's doing. That He cares for us. And that He will bring us through at the proper time. So with those thoughts, guys, uh, just thank you guys for watching the video. I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.